Kite Life is proudly brought to you by Cabrina. And g'day and welcome to another episode of Kai Live, the Australian Kai Building television program coming to you from the Sandy Beach Kiosk here in Sandringham. And with me is Hudson. Hudson, what's going on? Uh, not much, Paul. It's great to be back on the show and it's just such a beautiful day today. Wind's blowing, sun's out. Couldn't be better. Nice one. Rider profile, Kiahi D Bodies. Sick guy, awesome riding, and he's, um, you know, first full series on the uh, PKRA. How's it going so far? Yeah, well, there's only been one event uh, run so far, but he won it, so that couldn't really be doing any better than that. Uh, just now, there are the second events about to start, so wishing him the best of luck, and uh, yeah, hope that he can keep it up throughout the year. Yeah, definitely. Here's some more on Kiahi. Check it out. Hi, I'm Kiahi Day Voiders. I'm from Noosa in Queensland. I've been riding with Cabrina for about about five years now. I ride the switchblades, the skillets, and yeah, I really enjoy it. Yeah, so I've been been fighting for about seven years now. I got into it when I was pretty young. My dad used to used to do some lessons and sort of just picked it up from there. And yeah, I love it. The biggest thing for me is probably probably the variety. There's just so many aspects of the sport and. It just always keeps me coming back. I guess, I don't know, I like to mix it up a bit. Don't mind doing competitions, but I also really like, I guess, sort of just traveling to, to different locations and doing the free riding as well. But yeah, really, I don't mind doing both. And yeah, I hope to sort of try and do both in the future. Yeah, so I've been, been doing pretty well in the competitions, been, been trying to compete, I guess, as much as possible. Had a pretty, pretty good year last year. I managed to take second in the Freestyle Nationals in the Opens. And then I guess next was the, the Marimbula Corona Classic. That was good fun. I managed to win the Opens in that, which I'm really stoked with. And then did the PKRA comp and managed to get fifth in the Freestyle. And although they didn't finish the waves, I managed to beat the top seed in my first heat. So I was really happy with that. And I guess that's something I want to try and do in the future, maybe maybe do a few of the PKRA comps to see how I go. Um, I guess for me, the surfing side of it, I really sort of like where surfing's going in the moment and try to, I guess, mirror that a bit and try some of the new school stuff they're trying. I've been trying, I guess, a lot of the airs, the, the fin bus, they're doing some pretty crazy stuff and yeah, I really like where it's going, so I've been trying a bit of that. Yeah, I really, really enjoy sort of, I guess, trying new stuff and trying stuff that you don't really see in kiting at the moment and really sort of enjoying trying stuff like the shove and different spins and yeah, I like where it's going and I hope to sort of keep trying doing that. Just recently I've been sort of talking to Cabrina and I'm pretty keen to sort of get into the, the world tour side, maybe do some do a few of the wave stops this year and it looks like I'm gonna try and do do all of them, seeing how I go. First up they've got they've got two events, one in Morocco and one in Lanzarote that I wanna start do it that I wanna try do. The first one starts the end of March and yeah, I'm pretty keen to sort of give that a go and see how I do. I found the biggest thing for me is find someone else your age that's sort of at a similar, I guess, skill level to you and sort of try and kite with them a lot. If you've got someone else there, you progress a lot quicker and I find sort of that's the best way, I guess, to learn, yeah, fast.
videos, yeah, are really good. I really like, yeah, enjoying them. They sort of, just watching them, making them, and it really sort of gives you an idea of where you're at and where everyone else's standard is. So, yeah, videos are really good. So I guess in five years' time, I, I'd like to see myself definitely sort of kiting as much as I can, hopefully, hopefully getting paid for it and basically making it my career. I'd love to, love to be doing a lot of travel. It's something I really enjoy and I'd definitely like to do a few comps as well and I guess, yeah, just see how it goes. Yeah, well, I guess if you're getting into kiting, it's definitely something I'd say, yeah, just do it. It's such a great sport. There's so much variety and there's so many different disciplines and it's something I love, so yeah, I'd say get into it. Yeah, the best way is to, to go find a shop in your local area, talk to one of the instructors and get some, get some lessons and sort of go from there and then, yeah, you'll sort of slowly progress and once you get it, then it's something you never forget and something you'll always be into. Alrighty, don't go away because there's more kite life coming up right after this break. No, this one, not the last one, this one. This one, yeah, alright, cool. Hi, I'm Mike Walker. I'm a Bolle ambassador and I'm from the Sunshine Coast in Queensland. I've got a kite school and a kite surfing shop called Kite Thrills and that's where I get my thrills. <laughs> I've seen the sport come a long way in the, in the time I've been involved with it. It's um, come from the early days with really quite difficult gear to use that wasn't particularly safe to today where the gear is so easy, it's so quick and easy to learn now and anyone who really wants to do it can do it. And um, the extra deep power and range that the kites have now really help you to, to ride waves a lot better than you could before. You can depower the kite and surf the power of the waves. So. And uh, it's particularly good for me. I've, my favourite discipline in the sport is, is surfing, riding waves. and. Um, even within that there's, there's favourite disciplines. I really love the strapless stuff, it's technical and it feels so good when you, 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 you land a, a tip, difficult move, there's no straps and it, you come down smooth with it. But I also really love strapped riding where you can go a little bit more aggressively at the, at the top of the wave and take on bigger waves with a bit more speed and confidence. So yeah, I, I like them both. Competitions is something that I, I love a lot, yeah. The, the intensity and pressure of the competition is just a different element to the sport. I like free riding a lot. It's, you know, like the name suggests, you're free, but in a competition you have to perform in those 10 minutes on the day, in those conditions with whatever gear you've got ready to go. So there's a bit of pressure there and that's just another element that I enjoy. I've had some good results recently in competitions. I got second in the wave riding nationals recently and um, had a few podiums in previous events with state titles and stuff so I'm glad it's going well um, and it feels good to, to get some good results. One of the things I love about kite surfing is not actually kite surfing itself but teaching new people to get into it and seeing, seeing the stoke that they get from you know their first day riding or their first downwinder or their first jump. It's, um, it's something I've got a lot of time for and it comes, comes naturally and easily to me to, to help other people enjoy the sport. So if you're thinking of getting into kite surfing, it's highly recommended from me. Um, I think it's definitely imperative that you get a lesson. People without lessons tend to hurt themselves, damage their gear, hurt other people. So it's, it's not hard to avoid the risks in the sport but it's not very intuitive either if you haven't had a lesson. So get a lesson and it'll all be safe. Get the gear that, that suits your budget, but whatever you do, just get into it. Just give yourself time, make sure you do it, and, and 
be a little bit determined, take responsibility for your own learning and, and if you enjoy it you'll, you'll naturally do it and you'll love it and you'll get into it and you'll have a good life. It's great to be involved in the sport at the competition level but also at the grassroots. You get to see people coming through the sport and um, yeah, see them progress from beginners right through to the elite level and it's, it's really good at the moment. There's a guy around me, Tom McGregor, who's only a couple of years ago started kiting and he just won the juniors uh, wave riding national championship so that was a huge huge event for him but um, there's lots of other kids around the coast too who show a lot of promise and it's, it's really good to watch that progress and develop. Okay today on the Kite Life Buyer's Guide we're talking about the Cabrina Switchblade and the Cabrina Custom Series boards. Switchblades bring a lot of smiles to a lot of people's faces and that's you know one of the reasons why we all love the kite. The Cambrina Intelligent D-Power System, the IDS, has been continually approved now over three years. When you let go of the bar with the IDS, the kite just dies and literally just sits on the water with about maybe 10% retained power. If in very strong winds, if you were caught out, you can then operate the IDS system and the kite will depower 99%. In the custom series boards, um, you can see one I've got uh, bindings mounted to and the other one has the standard Cabrina Sync backless bindings. The sinks have gone through three years of involvement um, and now literally are the most comfortable straps that I've found to use on the market. You don't have to have them tied on your feet but they really grip your feet. The Cabrina Sync foot plate can be mounted and rotated a little bit like modern um, boot bindings in that you can adjust them to an infinite angle of duck stance. Um, you can ride the board with or without fins due to the aggressive channeling on the bottom of the board. In summing up, 80% of riders like to go out there and just have fun, get some big boosts. Switchblade is just outstanding for boosting, hang time, medium light bar pressure, just easy to use for male or female. And this, the custom, you know, if you've got any knee issues or, you know, you ride in windy conditions, um, don't think there's a better board out there for that. And if you want a board that crosses over so that you can take it to the cable park or tow it behind a boat, there's literally not a better board out there. Alrighty guys, after the break we head to Queensland to catch up with Joe and Mel Millen. Also the guys at Go Kite in St Kilda will be teaching us how to do a... Kite Loop Slim Chance. It's after the break, don't go anywhere. <laughs> Alrighty, Kite Life has come to Mackay and we're taking five with the founders of Adrenaline Rush Kiteboarding, Joe and Mel Millen. Guys, welcome to Kite Life. Hey, thanks. thanks. Now, Mel, what a spot you guys have got here. It's awesome. Yeah, we have a beautiful spot here. Uh, this is Town Beach on Binnington Esplanade and this is our home for all the kite surfers here and uh, this is our office every day. So uh, it took us a little while to get here. We started with a static shop uh, 11 years ago and we've gradually built our way up and, uh, and now we're in prime location. Now Joe, tell us a little bit about Adrenaline Rush. What do you guys do here? Yeah, cool. Well, I mean, Adrenaline Rush has been here, as Mel said, for you know, this is our 11th year in business. Uh, we are basically the, the, uh, the only kiteboarding shop in this region. Uh, we, we do everything from you know, new to used sales to uh, we have a kiteboarding school. We also sell some other stuff like uh, you know, surfboards and accessories and some skate gear and whatever. So it's a, it's a mixture of stuff that, uh, that we try and look after our local you know, community of kiteboarders and, and their interests yeah, with product and everything they need. Now you've got a pretty sweet setup. The spot is beautiful, and I notice a pimpin trailer out there. Who tell us a bit about that, Joe? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, uh, it, it was basically uh, we, as Mel said, we had the static shop uh, for a long time, and we we're just finding that our customers always had to go to the shop. So we we're waiting each day for our customers to come to us. Yep. However, you know, as we believe the future of kiteboarding um, needs uh, the shop to be right on location. So, and because there's nothing, that, you know, no retail premises around here to move into, we, we built our retail premises, which we bring to the beach each day, and our and our customers love it. You know, we're right on location to help them out and uh, and to support them through their training. It's a beautiful setup. How much easier and how much nicer is it for you, Mel, just to be on location here in a beautiful trailer, working with you know really cool kiting people every day? 
Well, I've got to say, I actually feel like the luckiest girl alive. <laughs> Coming to work and having my office is just this is uh, is awesome. And uh, and basically, all the kiters come and hang out every day, so it's just like a big socialising day for me and uh, a little bit of work involved as well. But yeah, everyone comes and hangs out in the hammocks and bean bags and just chills out until the wind comes up. Alrighty, so Mel, tell us more about the the school and what Adrenaline Rush is doing to put back into the kiteboarding community up in this region of Australia. Okay, so our kite school runs six days a week and uh, we have lessons from beginner right through to advanced and then ongoing clinics as well. Um, basically, you know, it's, it's great for the guys coming and learning the sport because after they do their lessons, then our service to them continues on daily. Uh, they can come back ride each day through the week, we'll go down, land and launch them and uh, in between lessons we'll give them some extra tips and everything to help them progress. Will you pump up their kites as well? Uh, the friendship ends there, <laughs> no, we actually have an electric uh, kite pump set up so everyone's quite welcome to use that. Yeah, nice, that's cool. And you guys inside the van, I mean there's heaps of toys, what what, uh, what do you cover in the van? Yeah definitely, I mean we, we've got uh, you know video and DVD players and stuff in there so that we can do some extra training and, and some video days where you know we we'll actually go out and film uh, some people for advanced clinics, take them back into the trailer, analyse where they're going right or wrong yep. and build from there. Basically also we have uh, UHF radios in there so our instructors each have a radio so they can report back to, to the trailer or the main station uh, if there's an emergency or anything. So yeah, I mean everything was being you know, planned out quite well and uh, you know, and we tried to think of everything possible. Young family, living and working on the beach and putting back into the kiting community. Tell us about your, um, your Adrenaline Rush kiteboarding team or your team riders. Okay, so our team riders are gold to us. Um, basically, we have in our in our kite school we have four instructors, yep. um, led by Joe as our head coach, and then we have our crew of team riders. Uh, so there's about four team riders as well, and and pretty much they're just like an extension of us. So when we're busy and we're tied up helping people, they'll continue our service and and keep spreading the love and, yep. and helping everyone out. Will they pump up people's kites? No, they don't pump up people's kites either. But uh, as I said, electric pump is there for everyone. Yeah, nice one. It sounds all really cool, guys. Any any final words, Mel, to anyone looking at coming to Mackay for some kiting? Come and visit us. Check out Town Beach. The conditions are great here. You'll love it. And uh, just come and chill by the trail with us. So uh, what we're going to do today is a kite loop slim chance. Uh, we'll have to break it down in three steps. Um, we'll be doing uh, a kite loop, we'll be doing a front roll, and we'll be doing it together with a bar pass in there as well. Starting off with a kite loop. A uh, kite loop is basically what we do, we'll, the kite will rotate a full circle in the air. Keep in mind though, you got to have a lot of speed. If you don't have a lot of speed, you don't get any height. What we do is we unhook the bar, Normally what I do, I have my fingers in between the D-power line over here. Grab my other hand on the other side, pull it real hard, that way the kite will make his circle and now we'll get a boost up in the air. Alright, so the front roll, it's again, make sure you have a lot of speed. Uh, you unhook the kite, keep both hands on it. Uh, you load up as hard as you can, then you pop up and you kind of make a rotation forward. Uh, a front roll rotation means you spin your head uh, from this way, you make a rotation going. That way it's what you're landing, land down with. This is when we go left side. You do a right side, same thing, but you gotta get the other way. Alright, so the front roll bar pass is almost the same thing as the front roll, but while you're rotating, um, you go up, you kind of look up that way. Once you look up over there, you have a momentum that you have no power in the kite anymore, which gives you, which allows you the time to pass your bar. And what you do when you pass the bar, you have still you have your fingers uh, in between the D power line or the D power line in between your fingers. That way you can rotate the bar one time, grab it on the other side, and land it. All right. So the whole the whole trick, the kite looks slim chance. Uh, let's say we're going to the left side. Uh, once we go left side, make sure we have a lot of speed so you can get uh, enough height. What we do is unhook again, same thing as the kite loop. We grab the bar on the other side. Make sure timing is very important, so once you 
kite goes around, you're trying to load up hard and pop up. Once you get that boost up, you make, uh, you have your front roll rotation going as well. So your front roll rotation stops once you're looking up that way. And once you stop there, you get good timing, you pass the bar back over here, do your handle pass, grab the bar again, and land down it. Key points are, uh, make sure you have a lot of speed, timing as well, timing is very, very important. As well, when, uh, your area's got to be clear, so make sure you have a safe area where you can practice. Uh, maybe start off with deeper water, don't try it in the shallows, sometimes you crash very hard. And after all, if you still can't do it, just come down to Go Kite and uh, I'll teach you how to do it. Hi right, guys, we're down the beach here today to do the gear review on kites. And the kite we have is the new Best Kahuna V3. It's basically a four strut delta shaped kite. Okay, this is a mid aspect kite which boasts nice stability for all riders. Now the Kahuna is leaded towards the uh, progression into more freestyle riding and also wave riding. This is a perfect kite for people who are coming straight out of lessons into the sport. However, uh, the more advanced riders really like this kite in, uh, in the waves. It hosts a very smooth and consistent feel in the sky and very stable. The kite also relaunches well off the water, okay, and is really overall just a dream to ride. Being a four strut design, okay, it's a very simple setup, okay. It does not have one pump system, so it's a very uh, simple inflation system where you inflate each strut and the leading edge separately. Now this is a good feature basically because there is less hassle later on down the track when you're trying to repair the kite or you don't have any valve failures because of uh, a one pump system. The new features on the Kahuna V3 uh, that are different to previous years are basically the material and the setup on the kite. The new material that best have used on the Kahuna V3 this year is better for UV resistance and also waterproofing. So it allows the kite to relaunch off the water a lot easier okay, and make it easier for for uh, people who are learning and uh, allows for a lot better progression into the sport. The bridles on the Kahuna V3 are very simple. Basically they replace the pulleys with these uh, solid guides. So if best have focused on these small little things and created a kite that has a uh, very simple setup and, uh, and less failure while you're out there riding. Okay guys, the next kite we're looking at is the, uh, the new Taboo from Best for 2011. Now the unique feature of the Taboo is that each size is uh, engineered to suit its specific riding style. Okay, the smaller sizes have extra material in, in the kite which makes it more durable. And as you go through the sizes to the larger ones, okay, they reduce the amount of heavy material and make the kites fly a lot lighter. Okay, as you can see, the Taboo is uh, in the smaller sizes has a six strut feature, which gives more tension over the canopy, allowing it for tighter loops and more control uh, when, when doing mega loops and kite loops. Okay, as you can see, the Taboo is a one pump system. It also has the feature so that you can isolate each strut by clicking off the valve here. The Taboo bridle is a fixed bridle with no pulleys. Uh, this feature allows the kite to have more positive feedback and also turns the kite a lot quicker. So the smaller taboos are built for durability, okay, so that you can smash them down in the high winds. And as the kites move through into the larger sizes, they're built with a balance of material that allows them to fly in light conditions and get you out in the sub 10 knot. Well guys, that's all we have here on the show this week. For more information on the show or kiting in general, you can go to our website, check out the Cabrini website. They're a great brand, great product, big supporter of the kite life, and uh, yeah, it's great to be working with those guys. Hudson, we'll see you guys next week. Yeah, see you next week, Paul. Thanks again. Yep.